right, we're going to discuss the difference between uh, pressure washing pumps. We've got three traditional pressure type pumps or ways of powering a pressure pump. We have direct drive, we have gear reduction unit, and we have belt drive. The unit we're looking at right here is a BE commercial direct drive pressure washer. Uh, this is powered by a, a general pump model EZ4040G. Now by direct drive, it means that it's directly mounted into the power plant of this engine. This one happens to be a Kohler Command Pro, 14 uh, horsepower, 429 cc's. Be comparable to a Honda GX390 power-wise, maybe uh, another horsepower or so more. This direct drive pump, uh, there's going to be a shaft coming out of the pressure washer and going into a the pump here uh, in this housing uh, there'll be a keyway from the shaft and it directly ties into this pump right here all right now let's talk about the bad news about a direct drive you typically will have a lot of heat transfer between this shaft to this pump that becomes a negative. It's hard on your pump. Uh, you may have a little less pump life than on a uh, machine that has an offset, a gear reduction unit, or a, uh, a belt drive type unit. Since you're in a direct line here, you will have a little more heat transfer on there. Also, there's no clutch type system on here. Um, if this engine is going and turning that shaft, then it's moving this pump in and out. So at that point, we've got to do some stuff with the unloader here to make sure we don't just cook the pump on this. Uh, and we'll discuss the unloader here uh, in a few moments. Uh, something important about uh, on a professional grade pump, you're gonna have a sight window so you can check your oil on there. Uh, always important to, to check that oil. Uh, it's gonna keep your pump lubricated. It's gonna help keep your pump cool as well. Now, bad news about the direct drives is typically speaking, and there will be instances where this is not true, but typically speaking, most direct drives will not pull from a static water source, meaning you can plumb this into a tank and it will most likely not pull. You could take it off your trailer, get it down below gravity level, the water level of the tank. It may prime itself and it may start pulling, but you really can't guarantee that a direct drive is going to all the time pull from a water source. They need to be fed. They need to be fed by an active garden hose or have a 12 volt system, a 12 volt pump feeding water into this. I see lots of guys having lots of questions because they've not really done the research on there and they buy a, a, a small AAA style pump um, and they're like, gosh, it won't pull from, from my tank. Uh, I just can't get it to pull. Well, these direct drive pumps are not really designed to pull from a tank or a static water source. They do want to be fed for optimum precision. And I'm sure there's going to be people out there going, well, I have a direct drive and it pulls just fine. Again, there's exceptions to every rules and consider yourself lucky if that happens. And just because it's a lower priced direct drive pump uh, or, you know, lower priced unit doesn't mean that that's a bad thing at all. Um, this type of pump could give you years and years of great service if taken care of well, uh, if properly lubricated. Also, if not overheated. And that brings us to another part of the pump here, or another part of the system, not really part of the pump, but the unloader system. And where most people are absolutely killing their direct drive machines 
is they let them run when they're not on the trigger. You really shouldn't be on your trigger for more than a minute or so uh, on a direct drive machine, especially if you don't have an unloader with a, a loop feeding back into here. This is going to help keep your pump cool because whenever you let off the trigger on your gun, it backs up pressure into here and the unloader unloads the pressure off of your pump since it's now, now not coming out of the gun going this way, the unloader shoots the water through this loop back into uh, the, the lower side of the pump, which is the intake on here. So it's helping to cool it down a little bit, but this is not a huge loop, so it's not going to stay cool for very long. I wouldn't run this for three to five minutes if I was off the trigger. In fact, those guys out there with pressure washers, you can see this yourself. If you let off the trigger for a little bit, then all of a sudden feel it. You'll feel your gun get warm. You'll actually feel warmer, hot water coming out of the end of the gun um, for a brief period if you've gotten off the trigger and it's just been running in, in recirculation mode for a while. So that is probably the number one killer of pumps is especially the direct drive systems is letting this just recirculate, moving it around while it, it, it's still going, putting your, your gun down to inspect your work. Um, that's going to be a huge killer of these direct drive pumps. Now, one of the things you can do, you can actually make a longer loop. You can also take this off and plumb it back to a tank. You could put 20 foot of hose, 50 foot of hose on here, plumb it back to a tank or have it even going out, uh, you know, into a flower bed somewhere. That would certainly extend the life of the pump because the hot water would be unloading to the end of this hose, either back into a tank or out into a flower bed somewhere. Now, the bad news is if you plug this into a tank, you're going to lose a lot of the portability of this unit here because you're, you're tied in um, to a hose somewhere. Something else this unloader features is a thermal blow off. So whenever this unloader, whenever this water starts to get hot, this will now start shooting water out of here in an effort to save the pump itself. So when the water starts coming out of here, it means it's reached a certain temperature and water starts shooting out here and that's an effort so you don't uh, cook your pump. But literally since pressure washers have been invented, the direct drive pump has been around. Uh, there are people, I am sure millions of people across the globe use these direct drive pumps every day with no problems whatsoever. Just to understand the limitations of a pump like this. You've just got to make sure it's able to unload the hot water. You don't want the water heating up on here. You don't want to stay off the trigger for extended periods of time. But this direct drive system should give you years of, of trouble-free uh, care with the basic of maintenance on there. And again, this is, comes in a compact pull-around design powered by the Kohler 14 horsepower, the Kohler Command Pro on here. A fantastic unit. And we're going to do some size comparisons in another video to this size pump versus a smaller residential machine. And I think it'll really sink in about the difference between a commercial grade pump and a residential pump. But a machine like this, um, you could buy this five years from now, you could be using literally the same machine uh, if you've just uh, maintained it correctly.